What is up everyone? Welcome back to Wait Your Turn Leisurely Minis. I'm glad you have been waiting for this moment. Whether but in space, you're also very welcome to. It's kind of dusty in here, but I have a... Actually, it's actually it's actually getting better now that we've started the stream, but I have a little bit of a headache, which might impair some of my reasoning for today's hunt. Um, but we have... Now we'll leave the phoenix there. Alright, he'll just stay there. But um, I've decided for some strange reason to go after a level 3 Screaming Antelope today. So I was going to sign on early, but there were some other things I had to manage before we could start the stream. But So there's no time to really talk me to talk me out of it. You know, I, I just need something new. We can't just keep fighting level 2 Screaming Antelopes and White Lions. It's just, you know, it's, it's getting boring. So we need to spice it up a little. We're going after a level 3. We've chosen our survivors. I've mixed up some of our loadouts for today. Is the audio okay? Oh, you? Alright, good. Leisurely, let's not lie here. All reasoning is generally impaired here. <laughs> oh man, that's a dig. Alright, so we have Wojo, Trump, Wojo, it's Polish. Wojo, Trump, Clara, and Pi. Uh, these are our best survivors. They only have two hunt experience on each one of them. And uh, I guess we could do a little, a little showcase of what they have. No, I'll let you all just discover it as we go. So, we're gonna get everyone lined up. We finished up, finished our settlement phase last episode, uh, which was for the best, and we have full lantern armor. So I'm feeling extra confident, which is part of the reason why we're doing this. Uh, so Trump is in full lantern armor complete. Um, so I'm pretty sure he'll gain up to full survival limit, and all of his weapons will now, his clubs anyway, will have sharp on them as well. So for that reason, we're going after Screaming Antelope, who has a weakness two lantern stuff blah, 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 blah. yep all right so i'm not missing anything blah 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 okay good so that being said with that being said we are ready to begin the hunt which is good i'm glad that we did the settlement at the end of the last episode so it's not impairing with anything or messing with anything and um i guess we could introduce our quarry real quick um i'm really sorry i haven't released any normal videos for a while now it's totally my fault uh, level four. Did I say level four? I, I meant level three. Level three. And, um, but I will. I'm going to be working on a couple of videos, at least filming them tomorrow, or not, if not tonight, and we'll see. So, a level three Screaming Antelope. It has the Diabolical End of Turn Trample ability and Trample, as well as these two new cards. I do level four. Well, we can't do level four because we have not unlocked a level four Screaming Antelope, but we do have these additional cards. So we have Hyper Metabolism. So whenever the monster consumes terrain or gear, the monster gains plus one speed, which is one thing. And I don't think we'll actually see that too much, but it's something to be aware of. And then we have Legendary Horn. The Screaming Antelope is impossibly old. The monster gains plus four toughness on top of its, top of its already irredeemable toughness and plus one speed token. When a survivor with less than 5 courage ends their act adjacent to the Screaming Antelope, they suffer 1 brain damage per monster level, which is going to be 3 in this case per monster level, but we will have a chance of obtaining the Screaming, or the Legendary Horns at the end. So, oh, I was unaware you had to unlock monsters. Well, normally you can unlock, once a monster is unlocked, you can hunt any level, 1, 2, or 3, if you've defeated the previous level, I guess. Um, but there are the Legendary Level 4 monsters, that uh, that you have to craft masks for. So I'm not entirely sure how you obtain masks. I've only obtained one mask uh, previously, but that was from a random event. So who knows, we might get lucky. We might unlock a, a level four Screaming Antelope today. Today feels kind of like the day. So with that being said, um, everyone is pretty good. I mean, Trump has nine armor points on every part of his body. He's tough. We have an order of death. We have Pi, who's just Pi. So um, yeah, so maybe next time. Brown you don't you need indomitable for all level three monsters unless you're not playing 1.5. Oh, is that so? Did I miss that? Man, I got bra fact checking me. Diabolical indomitable. I missed that. Hypermetabolism trample indomitable. So I believe uh the screaming antelope will not be able to be knocked down. Oh man, bra, he called he called out my bluff. So let's see if I have that. It should be somewhere in the back one of these generic cards indomitable there it is and so this is going to be a longer a longer hunt considering that um we have 20 or so 20 25 22 ai cards actually get through so um 
I just got the notification for this stream. What's Indomitable? So this is Indomitable. It's a generic trait card that's unlocked for certain stronger monsters. So it's not actually included in the Screaming Antelope deck, but it's shared by all, I guess, level three monsters. So whenever the monster attacks or is attacked, it stands at the end of that attack. So I guess it can be knocked over. The monster will not stand if a survivor is attacking a minion or another monster. If a survivor attacks during another survivor's attack, the knockdown monster will stand at the end of the new attack. So basically, the uh, the monster will not um, will not be knocked down for very long. It stands at the end of that attack, so it can be knocked down momentarily, at least for one turn. Weather one space, haha. Chat making it even harder for you. <laughs> Bra, bra, <laughs> you got me again. All right, I need to put this here or else I'll forget it. So I'm gonna put it right there. And um, yeah, it's been a long time since I fought anything level three, but we're not going for longevity in terms of the settlement. We've played enough Lantern years. I think you know how the game goes. And uh, maybe I'm just trying to be suicidal on purpose, but I'm feeling it. <laughs> it feels like a good day to die. And uh, let's get down to business. So this is our settlement setup, our hunt board setup. We got Katsu in the back. Oh man, I feel like my camera cannot handle this awesomeness. And we are gonna go ahead and advance on the first stage of the board. Our party of fools. And we are gonna go ahead and advance on the first stage of the board. Our party of four. Just a nice adventure party. So we're looking for an extra good show, tactics. <laughs> Maybe. It's going to be a long... It, it could either be really short or very long. Oh, it's, it's actually my least favorite event ever. Um, the Carpet of Ticks. The ground is covered with a carpet of huge, writhing ticks. Each survivor must try to fend off the swarm. Roll a d10, add your hunt experience. On a result of 6+, plus, you successfully smash the ticks away in a shower of gore. But if not, things get worse. So, I'll turn on our secondary camera so you can check out my rolls, <laughs> as good as they might be. And Brahmithor, yes, you can knock it down. If you do, you can surge with an adjacent survivor attack before the end of the attack. Oh, that's great. Thank you. All right, so let's start with Woyo. <laughs> Woyo's going to try and fight off these tickets. Ticks, he rolled a one. He rolled a one. Plus two, three. Oh, my goodness. So on a result below six, the ticks make you sick. Reduce your survival to zero. Oh, man. We had a survival of six, and then he's going to roll again. He got an eight plus, and now he's going to suffer minus one permanent strength. Wow. That destroyed Woyo. So Woyo's going to go down to zero survival, which is kind of okay, because he was just going to hold a shield for this fight. It's all on Trump. Trump. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't choose this. But it kind of made sense. But anyway, it's uh, this is <laughs> this entire fight is 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 dependent on Trump. I did not plan this, and um, I kind of did. But I mean, the naming is incidental due to someone else. Anyway, Trump is gonna roll to see if he can fend off the ticks. He rolls a two plus two is four. All right, so he his survival from six is reduced to zero as well. <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> this is absolutely terrible. Um, and now he's gonna roll again. He rolled a 9, so his strength is also going to be reduced to 0. Oh, wow. So we're losing permanent strength uh, up the wazoo. Clara's next. Uh, we roll a 5, plus her hunt experience. She manages to successfully smash the ticks away in a shower of gore. And then Pi, come on, please, good rolls. 3 plus 2. She also has her survival reduced to 0. Wow. Okay, so we lost everyone's survival. I was really banking on that. And now let's see if she loses permanent strength. She does not. Wow. So we got destroyed. Got this clubs and lantern armor will cut it up like butter. I, that's what I'm hoping. That's what I'm hoping. And I do want to make a legendary legendary horn, lance of longinus kind of spear dealio because we haven't really messed around with spears this entire campaign. So carpet of ticks, that destroyed us for our first hunt event. Let's move on to the next one. Red dies tens place, black dies ones place, and we're rolling 75. What does it mean? What does it mean? All right. I need to clean up my workstation over here. PlayStation. Okay, 75. What adventures will we have today? Let's see. Are you editing while, you wa while, you while you're watching, brah? Oops! <laughs> Alright, event 75 is called Oops with an exclamation point. Stumbling through the darkness, the event revealer crashes into the ground, crushing their lantern beneath them. The living light inside the lantern becomes agitated by the survivor's clumsiness and burns a piece of gear. The event revealer archives one gear of their choice from their gear grid. So in this case, we're just going down the line. So this is Trump, the one who we're uh, putting all of our hopes and dreams on. 
he loses a piece of gear. So, oh, this is going to be really annoying. Mm, oh, we're actually going to get rid of his shield. Oh, no. I guess we're going to get rid of his shield. All right. Spears do have further reach, just one square in addition. All right. So, we're getting rid of a round leather shield. It's... He, I mean, he has full lantern armor, so already five slots are taken up in his gear grid. He has a monster tooth necklace, which is activating his lantern greaves. So if we get, and we, he has some bone darts, which are the cheapest item we have. But if we were to get rid of the monster tooth necklace or the bone darts, we would inactivate his lantern greaves, and his shoes would give him basically minus two movement, uh, which would be um, really bad. So I guess, ironically, the <laughs> the best. The best choice? I don't know. The choice I'm making is we're getting rid of his round leather shield, which is awful. It is very awful. That would be no bueno, but um, there it goes. I'll have to remember to put it back in the box. And Trump is uh, getting weaker. So here we go. Next, we're going to go to a Screaming Antelope normal event advancing down the board. As you can see, the Screaming Antelope is miles away right now. And we are going to reveal the next event, which is Devoured Grounds. The stone-faced ground is littered with the leavings of ravenous passing beasts. Half-eaten again, this plants are strewn everywhere. If any survivor has three plus understanding, they may skip the next hunt space. Otherwise, roll on a random event. All right, we have Woyo. Woyo does have four understanding. So yes, um, we could skip the next hunt space or roll random hunt event. Mm, yeah, let's skip a hunt. Uh, skip a hunt thingy. So, sorry, bro. I already made the decision. It's it's the lag. The lag is gonna kill me. Um, I guess. I I guess. All right. So we'll skip the next one. And in this location, I guess we we do have a pickaxe. So we're trying to get some iron up in here. And yeah, let's just keep going. Roll another doubles. We got a thirty-nine. Well, my reasoning for not tossing the necklace is because then he'd have a lot less movement, which could which could end him. All right, 39. Heavy mist. A heavy mist envelops the survivors, obscuring their lantern light. Roll a d10. If the result is even, the survivors stumble in the right direction. If the result is odd, they get turned around. Roll again on the hunt event table before moving on the hunt event board. If the showdown begins in, in the next space on the hunt board, the monster ambushes the survivors. So evens and odds. Let's see. A 10. What does that mean? So even means they go in the right direction. Okay, good. Do it after overwhelming darkness so you could go deeper. That's what I'm that's what I'm thinking of. So we make it to overwhelming darkness. That was actually fairly quick, all things considered. And let's go ahead and check out overwhelming darkness on page one four seven. We have Song of the Brave, so everyone is able to take the path of the brave, which is preferred in this case. And if, let's see, leisurely, if this mist is any, anything like the mist, tentacles everywhere. <laughs> Mineral gathering, that is. Yeah, you're right. So here we go. We're going to start with Woyo. He's going to walk the path of the brave. And hopefully uh, this will not destroy us. Here we go. There are no <laughs> tentacles everywhere in this case. All right, Woyo gets a four. Uh, a massive whale swims overhead. Your your guts quiver with its booming cries. You vomit in fear, but keep a brave face. Gain minus one evasion token. After this event, all other survivors gain plus one survival from your bold display. Okay, so his evasion is going to drop. But, um, actually, I'll just write... Uh, no, I'll, I think we can actually get rid of that evasion token. But in the meantime, Trump's going to gain one survival. Clara's going to go up to six survival. And Pi is going to go up to one survival as well. Okay, so let's just hit that whale a couple more times, hopefully, and we can uh, we can restore our survival to maximum levels. Yes, we have Song of the Brave. Core for games. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to the stream. Um, next up is Trump, also walking the path of the brave, obviously. And we're going to roll for him. He gets a four as well. All right, we're going to hit that whale as many times as we can. So Trump gets a minus one evasion token, but now Woyo is going to gain one survival, Clara is going to stay at six, and Pi is going to go up to two survival. Again, vomiting his guts out. Everyone's just vomiting, but um, it's somehow inspirational. Inspirational vomiting. 
You are right. You can drop one negative token on arrival with Song of the Brave. Yes, that is, that's what the trigger was. That's what I was thinking of. Clara's next. Let's hope we keep this four chain going. She rolls a nine. With your lantern held high, you cut a path through the teeming darkness. Suffer one event damage to your arms. So Clara goes down to four arm damage and four armor. Uh, exorcist vomiting should be an Olympic sport, according to this. <laughs> it's uh, It should be a reality TV, maybe. And then finally, Pi with the last roll. Please be good. A three. You punch yourself in the face and chase away doubt. Gain a minus one accuracy token, which is okay, because we'll get rid of that momentarily. All right, good. So that's good. We survived overwhelming darkness. We didn't get a, an entire party wipe like we have before. Thanks for the shout out. You're welcome. And let's keep going so here we go screaming antelope event next one actually should we do this or should we do um some mineral gathering you know uh all right we'll just do it and then we'll do mineral gathering on the last screaming antelope event here we go migration some unseen force has set off a massive migration nothing remains but uprooted acanthus plants and shattered ground ruined by hooves move the screen screaming antelope three spaces away from the survivors on the hunt board all right so the Screaming Antelope is going to run away from us, and he's going to trigger Starvation. So we're going to remove D5 resources from the settlement storage, unfortunately. Or right, would we? Oh, I, w I rolled a 1, actually, so no resources. People just manage to, like, suck on a rock, and they, they stave off Starvation. So that's good. Uh, we're going to move on to the next hunt space. Oh, you do both? I, I was pretty sure that Mineral Gathering actually replaces the hunt event. I think so. Oh well, that's how I've always played. So there we go. We're rolling 84 on a basic event. Oh, what could happen on 84? Anything, anything could happen on a roll of 84. So here we go. 84, hope it's something good. Scribe's book. A huge ornately bound book lays open before the survivors. If the settlement has pictographs, any survivor with three plus courage may write their names in the book. Insane survivors with three plus courage must write. Uh, looks like we do have a number of... Actually, we only have two. Pi and Wojo, Woyo would be the ones to write in their book, and they are compelled to do so. Each survivor who writes their name in the book rolls a d10 and adds their understanding. If no one writes, roll again on the hunt event table before moving on the hunt board. All right. So Woyo, he's had a bad day, but not a bad enough day to go ahead and jump into... Uh, this book. I don't I don't mind the book. Chat calling your sneaky ninja cheats again. This is what we're here for. An incredibly charismatic storytelling gameplay. <laughs> oh, thanks, Leisurely. That's really nice. All right. The book. It is time for Woyo to inscribe his name. So he just frantically grabs the pen and just starts scribbling madly. He has four understanding, so he gets plus four. So hopefully he won't die. And let's get a high roll here. We got a six plus four is a ten. As you write your name, you feel restored. Heal all injury levels and lost armor points. Gain plus two survival. Wow, all right, so Woyo, that was a boon for him. He is gonna go up to three survival, which is better than what it was before. And charismatic, I, I'm flattered. And then Pi is gonna roll next, please. Hi, oh, she only has two understanding. So let's see what she gets. A two, <laughs> oh no, two plus two. <laughs> No. All right. So, um, the uh, what do you get when you take the circumference of a survivor and divide it by its was diameter? You get a dead survivor. So, as you finish writing your name, you know that you did something terribly wrong. You vanish from history, dead. Archive your gear. All right. So Pi has died. Uh, we should have totally done mineral gathering instead of that, but Pi is no longer with us, and her body just it it leaves no trace. So Bra. Uh, you, 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 uh, you had a premonition there, but luckily, uh, Pi only had rawhide gear, a lucky charm. Oh, also our cat eye circlet, so <laughs> Pi got divided. Yeah, um, so we don't have a cat eye circlet anymore, no lucky charm, no claw head arrow, and Pi is gone. Man, sorry, Jenna, if you're watching this, I'd be, I'd be very sad. Jack would be sad, yep, Oh, Well, we don't have to r remove a, uh, a minus one accuracy token from her because she's dead. So now a party of three going against a level three screaming antelope. This is going to be wild. Um, yes, and they took our lucky charms. That book. All right. Um, we're going to go ahead and mineral gather instead of this screaming antelope event. I'm pretty sure. Let me let me check the text. If it's both of them, let's see. 
Oh, place the mineral gathering event on any hunt space. Oh, so you do both. All right, let's uh, let's work with that revised revised rule, and we'll start. Should we start? Actually, we'll do mineral gathering after the screaming antelope. <laughs> Knowing what the antelope does, uh, we'll do that first. So here we go. Vomit pile. The survivors find the half-digested remains of the quarry's last meal. Each survivor may scavenge and gain plus one courage and roll on the table. Why not? Let's do it. So Woyo is going to gain some courage, and Trump's going to reach his first level of courage, and Clara's going to reach her milestone level of courage as well. So they're all going to be prepared, uh, allowing them to add hunt experience when determining the straggler. And yeah, let's uh, trigger that courage event real quick before they start ingesting some um, pre-digested vomit. Um, again, vomit is the theme today. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, sorry for everyone who might be a little squeamish, but that's, that's what we're doing today. All right, bold. In a single moment, perspective changes. Your perspective changes profoundly. So Trump, what does he gain from this? He rolls a nine, so he's gonna gain plus one permanent strength. Don't mind that. So now take that, ticks. And then Clara is going to roll a 1, gain plus 1 speed token for your next showdown. Alright, okay, I can live with that. Let's see, do we have any speed tokens left? Speed, 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 ah, there's our speed tokens. Good job, Clara. And now let's roll for these, for this vomit pile. You should take pride in your dice roll, honestly. Some players would fudge stuff. <laughs> oh, well, keep watching, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Keep watching, and then and then we'll uh, we'll see. All right, Wolyo, we are going to roll. Let's go. A six. You find something undigested and eat it. Gain plus one survival. All right, phew. We're slowly gaining all of our survival back. So Wolyo's back up to four from zero. Ayo, it's Elias. Welcome to the stream, my friend. Um, things aren't going great. <laughs> And I have a headache, but actually, just playing this game is making my headache go away. Or at least, maybe we'll come back with a vengeance. Alright, Trump is next. Let's see what he gets in the vomit pile. He gets a 2. Sickening. Archive all consumable gear. He has nothing consumable, so uh, no problem. He, why would he eat his gear if it's sickening? Anyway, great t-shirt as always. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, it's just just representing. Alright, Clara's next. Here we go. I forgot what shirt I was wearing. We got a 10. For Clara, the antelope is clearly sick, vomiting up pieces of itself. Gain plus one understanding and a random, uh, random resource. All right, great. So the, the the antelope is vomiting up pieces of its own skin. I don't know how that works, but it's eating itself somehow. That's also I don't know how that works either. And then uh, she is going to reach her insight milestone for understanding. And she is going to uh, realize the truth in a, in a strange way, or some, some variation of the truth. All right, insight. Where are we? 131. And let's see. Oh, come on, camera. I'm not that boring. <laughs> Tom Vassal seems to be really enjoying Etherfields. Well, he enjoys every game. Uh, vomit, vomit everywhere, and all our drops to drink and chew. Chunky soup. So my hype to receive that game is quite high. To be your your hype was always high, Elias. Don't don't kid yourself. And um, uh, we'll we'll see we'll see. I'll be I'll be the judge. I'll be the judge for myself anyway. All right, here we go. Insight in a single moment. So we are gonna roll. Let's see. Add plus two to investigation rolls. Blah blah blah. Not true, dude. Not true. All right, fine. I don't watch Dice Tower that much, so. But it, it seems seems anyway. All right, never mind. What are we doing? Hunt phase. We're going to roll for Clara's insight. So is there some sort of chance the antelope is crazy sick and dies before you fight it? That would be great leisurely. Unlikely. All right, we rolled a 7 for Clara, and she is going to gain plus 3 survival and plus 3 insanity, which isn't that great because she already has maximum survival, but she is going to go up to 11 insanities. All right. Likes every game. Boom. <laughs> So, all right, here we go. Moving down the hunt board. Oh, the screaming antelope is off the screen right now. Let's see. There he is. There it is. And we are going to roll again. A 52. Great roll. Great roll. I avoid dice tower. That component drop makes me puke every time. The sacred minis. <laughs> oh, I'm not even familiar. I don't even know what that is a, a reference to. All right. A roll of 52. 
Mad flies. Oh, wow. You're so close, Leisurely. If we had rolled a 53, it would be Mask Salesman, and that would have unlocked some, potentially some legendary moonsters. So, mad flies. I've actually never had this. Tiny persistent insects swarm the survivors, flying into their ears and nostrils. The bugs buzz maddeningly, maddeningly in their heads, growing louder as they nest. That is dis that is terrible. Every survivor, each survivor rolls a d10. So let's start with Wario. First it's ticks, now it's mad flies, um, where he literally pours a box out into a big pile. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That is one of the one of the only games they did not do in a component drop was for Tainted Grail. That's like that would hurt that that hurts my heart. That hurts my heart. I don't know. There's just so much so much effort that goes into every game. I would never do that. All right, Wilio is gonna roll for Mad Flies. Let's see what happens to the poor guy. He rolls a nine. The eggs, their eggs, gestate. <laughs> what am I reading? What am I doing on a on a Monday afternoon? Their eggs gestate incredibly quickly, and mad flies explode forth from your mouth. The experience is gruesome, but makes you feel so alive. Suffer the frenzy brain trauma. If you have the rageaholic disorder or berserker fighting art, giving birth to disgusting new life kindles your rage. Suffer the frenzy brain trauma again. Okay, so I need to look up frenzy again. I'm pretty sure it's plus one strength plus d10 insanity or d5 insanity and you you can't use survival anymore and all right i need to just look it up let's see legally i see that and just the sheer disrespect now i'm waiting for the kingdom death jeff goldblum crossover uh they do get a ton of games there so i don't blame them i remember they have said how much they've regretted doing it for some games where they have to use hours sorting everything back oh no not so alive this gives me the willies literally chills up my back hearing that <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mad Flies. It is going to trigger Woyo's frenzying, which is actually going to be kind of interesting because we just gave him a shield as a weapon in this case. We didn't really expect him to do much. Plus one strength token, plus one speed token. All right, grabbing that, grabbing that. Let's see, where are my strength tokens? Where did I put those? Over here. All right, plus one strength token. What else does he get? Um, 1d5 insanity, so we're gonna divide that by two. A one divided by two is zero, so he's not gonna gain any insanity. Ignore the slow special rule on melee weapons. You cannot spend survival or use fighting arts, weapon specializations, or weapon mastery. A survivor may be, may be frenzied multiple times. All right, sounds good. Woyo is frenzying, so just remember that. I'm just gonna write it on the sheet. Hopefully I'll remember. If not, Bra or one of you will remind me. All right, Trump. Let's see what Trump gets as well. Please, Frenzy. Two. Uh, you dive into a nearby marsh to flush out the disgusting insects. It works. But now you're constantly distracted by the tiny bug corpses you occasionally hack up. Gain a minus one evasion token. All right, Trump. That's gross. And then finally, we have Clara uh, rolling a five. So we get every single reaction to this. Uh, the buzzing immediately stops and the flies depart. The rejection makes you feel strangely despondent. Gain plus one insanity. All right, so Clara's up to 12 insanity right now, so her brain is quite, quite protected at the moment. And we still have one spot remaining to move forward. Reminder, Woyo is frenzied. Yes, I had to be that guy. <laughs> Thanks, leisurely. And we're going to make a final roll. Did we do... Oh, we didn't even do mineral gathering. What the heck? All right, I thought you all were watching. All right, so let's do some mineral gathering real quick. Get some quick iron, and that's going to be on page 144. Here we go. Here we go. Mineral gathering. So we only have, I think Clara is the one with the pickaxe, right? Yeah, it is her. And let's roll for that on this nice little event sheet of things. A nine. Gain one scrap basic resource. If this event occurs after overwhelming darkness, you find a cave. Resolve all rolls on mineral gathering, then any survivor may descend to the worm tunnels. If you scroll up, I did mention mineral gathering. Oh, you did leisurely. Oh, I missed it. All right. So we're going to gain one scrap basic resource. Let me go ahead and write that down on our little sheet. Scrap times one. All right. Scrap, scrap. And now, because we're past overwhelming darkness, we do manage to get down into the worm tunnel. So, uh, we do not have a sickle in this case, unfortunately. So, who are we going to send down there? Who do we want to send down there? 
Uh, he also down Wooyo. He's already had a, uh, he's already had a, um, he's already had a blast thus far. So, alright, we'll send Wooyo down. He's, he's crazy. Alright, let's send Wooyo down the worm tunnels and again another roll. A nine! Oh my goodness. You find one iron strange resource embedded in a hairy crystal. Great, great image right there. Let's get some iron before I forget. Nice, some iron. Now we can make some beacon shields, potentially. Uh, you find one iron strange resource embedded in a hairy crystal. Choose to either gain the iron or spend two survival to follow a crystal trail leading you into the crystal lake. This is actually a great opportunity. We're going to forego this iron. Because Woyo can't even spend his survival in the upcoming battle, we are going to go ahead and ignore the iron, and we're going to go even deeper into this world. So, he's going to spend two survival going down to two, and let's just keep on going everyone all right for all you see you're getting excited core the secret to it as i mentioned it well core the secret to it is i mentioned it well before it was relevant to the game whoa what is this follow the trail all right so we have um actually this is almost this is definitely worth showing a little what i'm actually looking at right now so we have uh multiple levels so we started at the top and we passed the worm tunnels and Woyo is getting deeper into the crystal lake which is this region. Haha, <laughs> genius. I recommend winning the game. Thank you. Alright, as normal, I have to sleep, so good luck, and may the rules be in your favor. I'm okay. Uh, I'm talking to the screaming antelope, of course. Alright, Elias, thanks for joining us for a little bit, and sweet dreams, or sweet nightmarish dreams of mad flies uh, entering your nostrils. You know, the usual. Alright, we are going into the Crystal Lake now. We don't have a whip on us. I kind of wanted to bring a whip. Well, you could have, definitely could have brought a whip this time, but uh, I, I didn't I didn't do it. He was actually really good at using a whip last last battle and let's just keep on rolling so um, I kind of want a result of one or two that'd be great But if not, I mean, let's see what we get. I'm I, I didn't even realize I'd rolled this well That made me lose the game and thus you lose as well shutting up now. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh My goodness. All right, so that is a lantern 10 um, I don't, I don't, I don't, I didn't even want to roll that high, but we're doing it. We're going all the way down into the bowels of this, uh, of this particular mine shaft. So on a seven plus, you find two iron strange resources in the ceiling. You may gain them or spend three survival to descend into the lantern city. Now this is where our luck runs out. Woyo only has two survival right now. He does not have the third survival necessary to enter into the Lantern City, which is the fourth tier of this adventure. So unfortunately, we're not going to get into the Lantern City, at, at least for now, and we're just gonna settle with two iron. Unless you want me to cheat, and then <laughs> big brain moves, descend into the city. So uh, that's gonna be one iron and two iron. So one iron there, two iron there. You're just gonna have to buy the game for yourself and find out what happens in the Lantern City. But for now, um, I'm sorry, but Woyo did not, did not have the guts or the uh, the mental or longevity to get down into uh, the Lantern City. So, all right, you may gain them or spend three survival to descend into the Lantern City. A missed opportunity. I still feel bad about your um. Oh, perfect Slayer. Yeah, that's okay, bro. I I I I kind of cheated for for that. So I mean, the game takes away what I what I whenever I attempt to cheat, the game just takes it away from me. All right. So that is it for our hunt events, and it's time to uh, jump into our hunt event. That perfect slayer was saddening. Oh, the highs and lows. <laughs> you punished yourself already. It's okay, it's okay. I've got, I'm a young dude. I've got plenty of years ahead of me. Um, no need to rush anything. All right, so Lantern City is gonna be foregone. Um, there's some other cool things here. Let's see, oh, interesting. All right, it is time. You do not need to fight a hand level two, and you did it like a man, <laughs> bro. I'm, I'm, I can, I can feel your, I can feel the respect, <laughs> not just from the hand. All right, it's gonna be a three versus one. Yeah, that was a heck of a fight, though. Yeah, thanks, Leisurely. I'm glad. It's uh, you can't, you can't get genuine emotions in this game if you, if you cheat. I mean, the this game shines when you, when you just take it, just, just swallow the bile of the bitter bitter drink bitter cup however you want to put it all right pie is dead remember her life for it was short 
And now remember these survivors' lives because it will <laughs> also be short. So I love the video details. All right. Um, oh, thanks, Slaughter. Rules say once something is written one timeline, it cannot change. I think what you're turning is slowly descending into suicidal tendencies. First the hand, now this, except the time the game says no. So open, upping it to level two was not raw. Uh, oh, okay, I see. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that's that's what I, I read too, but then I, uh, I don't know. Oh, well. The hand, the hand is, I wanted a little bit of a challenge, so. No one to blame but myself, so. I, I appreciate, I appreciate the sport. Alright, it is now we're entering a new battle. Using Song of the Brave, we're going to remove a minus one evasion token, and we're going to remove another minus one evasion token from Woyo and Trump. And we are going to set up the Screaming Antelope. So everyone, I think we're going to have them start off on one side of the board. I did not draw terrain yet, so raw just means um, like the basic rules like it's true to the rules right uh, that's the interpretation but yeah you're right leisurely i am kind of descending into suicidal tendencies because i need a i need i need to make normal videos again so this um if, if i could i would just make live streams for kingdom death monster but i gotta i gotta get back into uh the bread and butter of this channel at least for a little bit and then i'll come back you can take the 1.0 lantern 10 result Rules as written. Oh, rules as written. Oh, wow. I didn't even know that's what it stood for. The more you know, everyone. The more you know. So, Survivor Monster, Bug Spot, Acanthus Plants, all the good stuff. Let's see. Do our Leather Worker. I need to put that there. And then let's grab some bug things. Dude, I'm loving these, though. I just set it aside for a month or so. <laughs> good. I'm glad. All right. We got, we're going to get a Bug Spot, six Acanthus Squares. And we need two random terrains. And what is it? What is it? What is it? Oh, yeah. Two random terrains. And let us continue. I'm glad you're enjoying it, Leisurely. Thank you. You're... Yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it, too. This is my favorite time of the week, to be honest. Yep. Mondays. Kingdom Death Monster Mondays. All right. Our first random terrain is an ore vein. Perfect. So at least we get some loot and... Uh, even though we'll lose our survivors. And our second one is a survivor corpse. What else? Do we have any strategists or anything like that? Nothing. Canvas plans, bug patch. And that is it. If you like these, literally, you should check out Rob Mithra's channel. Because he does a lot of... I mean, he spends time editing. So, what's wrong with doing nothing but KDM? <laughs> True, bro. True. I just... I, I promised myself when I got this game, the channel's not going to become a Kingdom Death Monster channel. So... I, I promise. I made a I made a soft core promise. All right, got it, got it, got it, got it. Um, this is gonna be a monster of a battle, and we're just starting. Oh, I need to plug in my power cord into that computer. All right, one second, one second. survivor corpse eleanor we will <laughs> let me that's actually a good point let me decide who that survivor corpse actually is i'm gonna roll a d10 for it uh that survivor corpse belongs to l'oreal rye hawk and athena bruno bruno he was killed by a white lion in probably one of the earlier parts of the settlement so um we just left his body and uh not our problem but now we're gonna get sweet gear from it so that's the best thing that could happen Part of me wants to get consumed by the Screaming Antelope. That'd be great, because I've never triggered that that event, that status yet. So we're gonna be trying a bunch of crazy hijinks today, and I'm not even I'm not even gonna regret anything. So here we go. Uh next thing we know, Borat will be found. <laughs> Alright. Um bug patch, we're gonna set it up one, two, three, four, five, six, something like that. The canvas plans at least six spaces away. One, two, three. Oh, we'll put one here. We'll put one here. I don't know. Put one there. Uh, maybe like one here. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 And then we'll put this one like here. Is that is that is that how it works? Two canvas plants. Oh, whatever. Something something like that. Maybe like that. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, 
six. All right, there we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. I don't know. I don't know. All right, or vein, roll a d10. Uh, we're going to put this at least six spaces from all other terrain. Let's just put it by us. And survival corpse at least, at least six spaces from all other terrain. Let's just put that by us as well. Something like Actually, is there anything even good on a survivor corpse? Maybe. There could be. Maybe not worth. Uh, we'll just see. If we if we really have nothing else nothing else to do, we'll, we'll get over here. Uh, okay, fine. We'll just put it over there by the phoenix. All right. Terrain has been set, monster is ready, and oh, I am ready to get destroyed. I think we do have one last thing to do, which is to use our Whisker Harp, which gives all survivors plus one survival on arrival. So, Trump's gonna go up to two, a whopping two survival. Wolio is frenzied, Clara has six survival, and this is gonna be messy. So here we go, focus on the board. So here we have the Screaming Antelope with our host of other miniatures on the side, and we are just in arms, staring down our destiny and imminent death. So here we go. First AI card of the showdown. Oh man, it's going to be rough. It's going to be rough. Here we go. I'm going to toggle more. Uh, let's see. We have Stomp and Snort. All right, that's a pretty decent one. So random survivor in range. Intimidate target. Their Screaming Antelope begins to stomp and snort excitedly a gurgled moan. Actually, do we have any targets that are actually in range? Random survivor in range. I think the screaming antelope's actually too far. Uh, let's see. A movement of eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, I guess, uh, yeah, the screaming antelope's actually too far. So the screaming antelope is instead going to graze, which is going to be... Uh, I don't know, the antelope is in pretty bad shape, it seems. Yeah, you wish. <laughs> full, the monster full moves to the closest acanthus plant and ends its turn. One, two, three, one, two, three. All right, so the screaming antelope is going to move to this acanthus plant down here, and it's going to consume it, healing one wound, and is going to end its turn right there. Okay, that's good, because there was no random survivor that was actually in range at the time, but now the screaming antelope is going to perform diabolical what does that mean it means at the end of the monster's turn target a random survivor in the trample zone which it happens to be both uh trump and clara so full move through the target move the monster through and pass the survivors if there's no target full move forward hmm this would be a good opportunity to dash i suppose i think we'll have clara dash out of the way so as you can see they're both in the trample zone right now and this is going to be at the end of the monster's turn. We might have Clara actually move, so she's going to dash. So she's going to go from 6 to 5 survival just to get into a good position. I don't know. It might be a little premature to dash, but why not? 1, 2, 3, something like that. And then Trump, I think Trump will just take it like a man. He has 9 armor points, no problem. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, they collide, but the antelope can't move it forward any further. So that's going to knock down Trump. And he is going to take, was it three damage? Three damage to a random hit location? Or should he have just dashed? Maybe he should have. Um, That could make things easy. All right, fine. He's going to dash. So he's going to move something like here or something. He's going to spend one survival. And now everyone's in a good position on the back side of the screaming antelope. All right, fine. We spent some survival. Should I have? Should I have done that? It's way too early to spend survival. No, okay. Trump's just going to take it like a man. All right. Take it like a man. So he is going to absorb that. He's going to get knocked over, and he's going to take, what is it, three damage? Three damage to the collides equal to monster's level to a random hit location. All right, three damage to what part of his body? To his head oh oh dear so he's gonna go down to six armor points on the cranial region get knocked down have a terrible day but he's gonna stand up at the end of this turn all right it's fine it's okay now what are we gonna do next oh i can already feel i can already feel uh the end of this game happening so uh let's magnify what's going on over there oh i feel i should be more gentle with this camera all right there we go. Enhance. Enhance to see the battle that is raging on. Um, 
I think Trump should take the first swing. But then again, Clara is an order of death with a round leather shield. You know, we should probably just have everyone take a swing at this guy. Who cares? All right, Clara, let's go. She's going to move one, two, three into the blind spot of the screaming antelope. Does she even have that much strength? Not really. Wait, where's Woyo? Wait, did I put out two females? Oh, I put out two females. Whoops. I forgot. Woyo is a guy, not a girl. So we're going to take out this guy, or this girl. <laughs> Sorry. And we're going to put in some guy. All right. This is Woyo. My bad. We're just going to do a gender swap midstream. And Woyo has Frenzy. That's pretty good. All right, we'll, we'll start with him. All right, so L'Oreal's going to, Clara's going to hang out on the side, and we're going to have Woyo move in. One, two, three, four, five. Into the blind spot. Oh, that's not so good. Into the blind spot of the Screaming Antelope, and he's just going to Frenzy it up with his round leather shield. Oh, this is probably going to go terrible. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, dear. All right, so round leather shield, two speed, um, hitting on sevens, hitting on sevens, sorry, no, hitting on eights with plus one evasion. Oh, this is going to be terrible. Oh, this is going to be bad. Why did I do this? All right. Hitting on eights, um, plus one strength or plus two strength. And let's see how, let's see how this goes. All right. We got a five and a six. So those are two utter misses. And then we're going to have Trump also try his luck. One, two, three, four, five. Getting into the blind spot of the Screaming Antelope. And he has... Let's see. Oh, I forgot. I think Trump, because of his armor set... Oh, wait a second. Lantern armor on arrival gains survival up to the survival limit. Oh my goodness. Why have I been worrying about this this entire time? So Trump goes back up to six survival because he's wearing full lantern armor. Um, that should have been obvious. So Trump's actually at six survival. Ah, oh, I should have known. Six survival. He's using a skull cap hammer, which has a trigger on a perfect hit. And in this case, let's see, I need to read the comments too. Uh, don't budget. Budget and just set up one space to left and right. You don't have to set up in the trampoline. It's actually so much worse. It could forward and stop the board edge and on top of the survivor. When a monster ends its action on a survivor, the survivor is knocked down and kicked back five. Oh, you're right. It would have been a lot worse. Oh well, missed it. At least I'll, I'll permit myself that one, that one cheat. All right, Trump. So Trump has a skull cap hammer. And so he's gonna be rolling a two speed attack on that. Uh, he has plus one, plus one accuracy because of his lantern gauntlets. So he's also in the blind spot. So it's gonna be hitting on a six. Hitting on a six or higher. And yes, let's just start with that. Six or higher. Here we go. Switch. A 10 and a three. Whoa, a perfect hit. First up, Trump. So Trump is going to get a perfect hit bonus. The monster is dazed and gains minus one speed token until the end of its turn. A monster can be dazed once per round. So it is going to lose its speed token for a moment. And Trump is going to get a solid skull whopping hit on the Screaming Antelope's palette. Failure, the giant maw snaps shut. If you're adjacent to the monster, you must spend one survival to react quickly or suffer three damage to the arm location. So, in this case, we could get a grit critical wound. Um, and Trump is going to, he has plus three strength and sharp. So, a total of six strength on him. The Screaming Antelope has a total toughness of 16. <laughs> oh my goodness. Has 16 toughness. Um, 16 toughness, and we have 6 and sharp. So, we'll see how this goes. Let's just roll. So, our first roll to hit. Oh my goodness. We need, like, I don't know. Sharp Sharp will change up this, this, uh, this roll. So, let's see. Oh, we got a critical hit. All right, well, that... All right, I was I was sweating for nothing. So, critical hit is there, is ours. Pallet has been critical wounded. The screaming antelope chokes on the blood spilling from its undermouth. The monster gains a minus one speed token and archive this card. So, this is actually going to give the screaming antelope minus one speed at the moment, but then he's going to gain... Then it's going to cancel out when he gains his speed token back. So, critical wound to start out. Pretty solid. That's going to get rid of one AI card over here. 
and we just need to remember that it's minus one speed at the moment, but that will change. Wow, good job, Trump. I'm, I'm proud of you. So where, where do I put this? All right, <laughs> I think I put this over here. Uh, should Trump go again and try his luck on a second hit? Um, kind of feeling it, kind of feeling the burst approach. Um, yeah, while, while we have it. So Trump's gonna surge going down to five survival and he's going to take another couple of swings hitting on sixes here we go a six and a six two hits with his skull cap hammer here we go two hit locations to the restless chest and to the giant tongue all right so the giant tongue has minus two toughness to wound this location and the restless chest would have the Screaming Antelope turn to face the attacker and full move forward in a straight line. So the Restless Chest will go second, and the Giant Tongue will go first. And with Trump, he needs some massive high rolls. We can get a critical wound on both of these, just remember that. And let's just try and roll high. Here we go. A five plus sharp, please. <laughs> please. Oh, five plus two. Is that good enough? All right, so seven with sharp plus six. 7 plus sharp, uh, I'm doing math, 7 plus 6 is 13, which isn't enough. Alright, so nothing happens, oh wait, we have minus 2 toughness here. We have minus 2, oh man, alright, math, sorry, gotta think real quick. So he has a toughness of 16, we have 6 strength, plus 7 is 13, minus 2 toughness, that's a hit, just because of the minus 2 toughness, we got lucky there. And that is going to be another wound to the Screaming Antelope. And now to the Restless Chest. Uh, we Actually, if we miss this, I don't. I wouldn't feel too bad. Oh, there is a wound reaction. I forgot. The Giant Tongue. Blood and spittle erupt from the Screaming Antelope's wounded Undermaw. So here we go. Uh, blood and spittle erupt from the Screaming Antelope's wounded Undermaw. If the wound ro roll result is even, suffer one brain damage. If the wound result is odd, gain one insanity. We rolled a... I think we rolled odds. We rolled a five first. So that's going to be odds. So uh, Trump is going to gain one insanity, which is great. So he's going to go up to five insanity. All right, so here we go. Trump is up to five. We dealt another wound. And now it's time to attack the restless chest to see what we get there. All right, here we go. Sorry for the weird transition. <laughs> All right, restless chest for a wound. And let's roll. A three uh, plus sharp plus nine. So that's 12 plus six is 18. That is gonna be a wound to the restless chest. So another wound is dealt to the screaming antelope and the screaming antelope is gonna react by turning the screaming antelope to face the attacker and full move forward in a straight line. So that's gonna trample both Trump and Woyo, unfortunately. Um, yeah, so here we go. <laughs> there we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They're both gonna take some damage. Uh, do they get knock, knocked down? I think they do. They do get knocked down. So they get knocked down. And let's see. For, all right, Woyo, that's going to be a waist shot. For Trump, that's going to be an arm shot. All right. So, oh, it's all dark. It's the, the darkness of Kingdom Death. So, who did I say? Woyo gets the waist shot. So he's going to go down to two armor points on the waist. And then Trump is going to take three damage to his arms going down to six. All right, and the Screaming Antelope runs away once more. But we've already done him three damage, so I feel pretty good about where we are right now. Um, and meanwhile, Clara, what is Clara gonna do? I think Clara is simply gonna just get some loot for us. <laughs> that sounds that sounds great. So, what up, Brian? Welcome to the stream. Uh, Clara's gonna go over to this um, Orvane, Ove, and she is going to go ahead and loot that. So at the ore vein, she's gonna roll a d10. She has no pickaxe. Oh wait, she does. She does, so we're gonna roll two d10. Perfect. So we roll an eight, find something shiny, gain one iron strange resource and archive this terrain. Perfect, wow, we are rolling. We're literally rolling, or maybe not literally, we're rolling in iron, figuratively speaking. Oh, that's the wrong deck. Let's see if we can get some more iron from this, all right. So we've gained like three iron, I think. Three iron thus far. We've dealt some wounds. We're still alive, feeling okay. And now it is time for 
Huh, should we stand up at the start of our turn or the end, start of the monster's turn? I think we're just going to have our uh, survivors stay down on the ground, maybe? I feel like that would be okay. Um, we'll see what the Screaming Antelope thinks of. <laughs> maybe it would probably be better for them to be standing. Oh, uh, probably. Probably. Mm. Ah, no, nah, we're just going to leave them on the ground and hope that nothing bad happens. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to draw the next Screaming Antelope card. It is now its turn. It is going to, let's see, we dealt him damage which reduced his speed and now it's his turn. So he's going to have that speed reduction and now let's reveal his next card. So it is going to be great kick, random survivor in blind spot. There's no one in his blind spot. Furthest threat in field of view in range. Uh, it looks like, let's see, can the screaming antelope even get over there to uh, the closest threat? That'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Would that work? I feel like I messed that up. It was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so no one is actually in range for this. So that's gonna, that's gonna work in our favor. So no target, uh, no threats, no one in the blind spot. The Screaming Antelope is simply going to consume this Acanthus plant and actually, unfortunately, heal one wound. So some of our some of our effort is going to be reduced. And healing puts the AI card, I believe, on the bottom of the deck. Was it on the bottom or the top? I think it's on the top, actually. So this AI card is going to return to the top. And uh, but we do manage to get out of that that hit. The Screaming Antelope does, however, activate Diabolical in the next turn, targeting Clara next. So, I guess Clara's going to take a hit, which is, I think it's going to be fine. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh my goodness. So, Clara, following Bra's rule correction, that's going to send Clara flying due to knockback and collision. So, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, she gets knocked down by a survivor corpse, which is okay, because then she can loot it next. And she's going to take three damage to the body location. So that's going to take her down to two armor points on the body. And it is now our turn. Everyone's going to stand up due to our fist and tooth mastery. And let's party. I think we'll start with Trump once again. Let's try and get some quick hits on him. And should Woyo even... Nah, Woyo shouldn't even try. Alright, so let's get Trump up in here. So Trump, what are you going to do? Trump's going to move one, two, three into the blind spot of the Screaming Antelope, rolling two dice to hit on, it looks like, oh, I forgot, we need to reduce his speed to zero now. Let's remove that negative token on the Screaming Antelope. And for Trump to hit, he is going to be attacking the Screaming Antelope, hitting on sixes, or no, that one cancels that. So hitting on sixes, because we're in the blind spot, etc, etc. Here we go. Hitting on sixes, like usual, an eight and a two. All right, so that's going to be one hit on the Screaming Antelope's Restless Muzzle. If you hit with a club or shield, you clobber the monster and gain plus two luck when attempting to wound this location. That's perfect. So now we're w critically wounding on an eight, nine, or ten. And I feel those are really good odds. I, I feel that that could definitely happen so trump try and make a hit please do a four fine all right no critical hit here four plus five that's sharp nine plus six is 15 and i think oh that is one shy of a hit actually is that really four plus five is nine plus six is 15 which is one off from hitting so the restless muzzle gets away from us there and he's just going to keep on surging. Let's do it. Wow, that was close. So he's going to go down to four survival. Let's try and take another couple swings at the Screaming Antelope's haunch. A six and a six, double hits. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. To the Restless Shank and the Furry Tail. Both have critical options on them. Uh, on the Restless Shank, if we wounded, we would be brutally back kicked. So let's not do that first. Let's target the Furry Tail. And let's strike at that magnificent bushy tail. So, again, we have sharp. Let's hope, or just get a critical. That'd be great. That'd be wonderful. 
Oh my goodness, it was, it was a critical for one moment and then turned to a four. All right, let's roll again. A three, seven plus six is like 13. That's not gonna hit, that's not gonna cut it. Restless Shank is next, ah, oh, come on, please. Critical, please, a seven, all right, that's better. Seven plus a four is 11 plus six, that is gonna be a wound. So the Restless Shank is wounded, we deal a single point of AI damage and now roll a d10 for each survivor currently in the monster's blind spot. On a result of three plus, they are brutally back kicked and suffer three damage to a random hit location and knock back five. Oh my goodness. All right, we rolled a lantern 10. So we are perfectly back kicked and suffer three damage to a random hit location to the head. Three damage to the head and knock back five. Yikes. Oh, my head hurts. Okay. That's ironic because my head actually hurts. All right, so he's going to be knocked back by five. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, he does not get knocked down, however. And uh, should Woyo even attempt to do something? I mean, he's frenzying, so yeah, why not? Woyo, get in there. Woyo's going to move. <laughs> he's going to be throwing his shield around for all the good that does. And he's going to be hitting on sevens? Is that so? No, he's going to be hitting on eights because, yes because that's who he is. Rolling on eights. Oh, he hit one, a hit on a nine. We are not even, we don't even care about the trap anymore. We're just rolling dice and having a good time. So what do we have here? The restless hoof. If attacking with a melee weapon is kicked out of reach, if we fail. So let's see. Um, With our shield, <laughs> oh no. Our shield is definitely gonna be kicked out of reach. So uh, we have plus two strength here. So we are hitting on a, all right, we, we're hitting on a critical wound. That's basically all we're doing. So here we go. A three, a three plus a three is six. That's gonna be a failure. So our shield is gonna be kicked out of reach. Spend an activation to retrieve your lost weapon before it can be used again. All right, so let's remember that on Woyo, his shield goes flying. I mean, yeah, that wasn't great. And now Clara is gonna use her turn to search a survivor corpse. So let's roll a d10 and scavenge that. A four, gain plus two insanity, and one random basic resource. All right, that's good. So Clara, from looking through, uh, was it Bruno's old body, finds a nice uh, femur that we're gonna throw into our settlement. So thank you. Thank you for doing that, uh, Clara. And she's gonna gain, what is it, two insanity? Two insanity, so she'll go up to 14 insanity which is uh, kind of dangerous, a little, a little, a little dangerous. And then she is going to, we're gonna remove that terrain and see what happens next. Actually, she could move. So one, two, three, four, five, something like that. And now it is a Screaming Antelope's turn, revealing the next AI card. Oh boy, oh, let's see. Let's see. Oh my goodness, I forgot about hyper metabolism. Whenever the monster consumes terrain or gear, the monster gains plus one speed token. So the Screaming Antelope already consumed two Acanthus plants. So this monster is gonna have plus two speed. I totally forgot about that. Is no one, is no one paying attention? No, just kidding. I'm glad you weren't, but I'm kind of sad I was. So the Screaming Antelope is gonna have plus two speed on its attacks from now on. And then it is going to stomp and snort. Random survivor in range intimidating a target. The screaming antelope begins to stomp and snort excitedly. A gurgled moan sounds from its undermouth. Turn to face target and roll a d10. On a result of four plus, the target suffers one brain damage per monster level and is knocked down. So uh, not, some, not exactly very fun things right now, but uh, let's see what happens here. So this is gonna be uh, a random survivor in range. So that, that could actually be anyone. So we're gonna roll for all of those choices now. All right. Sorry, playing Dead Cells whilst enjoying this. This antelope is rough. <laughs> okay. All right, so here we go, stomp and snort. We're gonna roll one, two, three for Wilio, four, five, six for Clara, and seven, eight, nine for Trump. And if it's a 10, we'll just roll again. Here we go. An eight, that is gonna be Trump. So Trump's gonna be targeted and the Screaming Antelope is going to turn to face him without moving, and then we're going to roll a d10. On a result of 4+, plus, the target will suffer 1 brain damage and be knocked down. So we rolled exactly a 4. Trump is going to be knocked down, suffer 1 brain damage, and be knocked back by 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yikes. 
And one brain damage to Trump, taking him down to four. Insanity. So, with that being done, what's next? Next is Diabolical. So the Screaming Elope is now going to plow through Woyo. <laughs> Just kind of like that. And uh, it's going to go straight through him. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Which actually puts the Screaming Elope right by Trump, which is useful. And Woyo is going to get knocked down. And he's going to take three damage to his body. Alright, so he's going to go down to two armor on his body. Uh, he can't dodge because he's frenzying. And we're going to take a brief intermission as this antelope slowly picks us apart. One second. Alrighty. Alright, so... <laughs> Trump is wrecking me both emotionally, physically, and mentally. Alright, uh, it is now... Our turn. So everyone's going to stand up. whoop de doo Trump gets back up. Woyo gets back up. Clara, who even knows what Clara's doing right now, but uh, she's she's just doing what she's doing. And we are going to start with Trump. One, two, three, four, five. He can get to the side of the Screaming Antelope. Hello, Alicia Lee. <laughs> I know I should have muted it. <laughs> Hello. All right, so Trump's going to move in. One, two, three, four, five. And he is going to get an attack from the side to hitting on sevens on sevens now because he's no longer in the blind spot here we go it's it's, it's a true authentic reality of, of playing kingdom death monster that <laughs> just makes you pee your pants all right here we go so we got an eight and a two that's gonna be one hit from trump and that is gonna be to the gnarled horns with a failure reaction here i thought you were playing your game literally you're not supposed to be listening <laughs> all right gnarled horns uh, Trump is going to be hitting. We have sharp, etc., etc. Let's let's hope for the best. Critical. That is the best. That is what we're hoping for. A nine, almost, but close enough. Nine plus sharp, plus eight. That's definitely a hit, and that is going to be a success. Here we go. Another wound dealt to the screaming antelope. We've dealt three, four wounds. Four wounds. That's actually not too bad. If I were face to face, I would do so as well, right before being consumed. <laughs> All right, and then Trump is gonna just keep on hammering with his survival, going down to three for a second hit, hitting on sevens once again. Here we go. A four and a three, two misses. My eyes and hands are distracted. I have the game muted. <laughs> and now, is it Woyo's turn? Woyo needs to spend an activation to regain his weapon, so. That's his. That's basically his whole turn there. And then Clara is gonna go one, two, three, four, five, and start, and use her main action to block with her shield. And that's it. That's all we can do. Screaming antelope time. Actually, Clara could dash and attempt to attack. That could be beneficial. Maybe. Yeah. Nah. We'll just keep going. Here we go. Screaming Antelope goes next, Buck, Mood. At the start of each monster turn, target and attack any survivors in the blind spot with this special ability. So that's a Mood. Uh, we can get rid of that uh, by playing a song on our whis Whisker Harp. Whisker Harp? So in this case, the monster is going to target and attack any survivor in the blind spot every turn, which is going to be annoying. And then it is going to perform Diabolical. Targeting, oh my goodness, I shouldn't have put, oh, I should have put Clara there. Oh, what, I'm, what a noob. All right, we're going to just push her out of the way and pretend that she didn't move there. Screaming Antelope is instead going to attack, oh, well, actually he could have attacked either Clara or Trump. So we're going to do a random draw. One through five here, six through ten, Clara. One through five, it's going to be Trump. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Screaming Antelope runs away in a dash. Trump gets knocked over, taking three damage to his arms. Three damage to Trump's arms. Oh, we are really getting destroyed here. And Trump is getting beaten up bad. He is. Oh, okay. And then it's our turn. He's going to stand back up. And we can't even see the screaming antelope right now. There he is. What should we do? Hmm. We should probably pick some acanthus plants, to be honest. So let's do some of that. All right, actually, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, Trump can actually get into the blind spot. Here we go. So he's going to move in there. Hitting on sixes like usual. Let's see what Trump can do. 
A perfect hit and a one, that's gonna be good. So that's gonna get rid of one of the speed tokens for at least one turn. And now he's gonna take a, did I roll? I think it was only one hit. Did I roll a seven two? Oh, I didn't even look at the other roll. Oh, I totally missed it. Let's, I suggest screaming at the antelope. <laughs> Thanks, literally. Let's roll the other one. Oh, it's a seven. All right, so it was a second hit. I thought it was. To the restless shoulder and the restless eyeball. So these are our two options here. And restless eye has first strike. Unfortunately, Trump is insane. So I think that will cancel our hits. And then the restless shoulder. Oh no. So the restless eye must be selected first. The screaming antelope's massive eyes glisten with human-like fear. The attacker's insane, cancel all hits and end their attack. Otherwise, the attacker suffers one brain damage. All right, so that's gonna cancel out both of his hits, unfortunately. But at least he does reduce the speed of the screaming antelope's attacks. And then he's just gonna have to keep surging for another hit. So let's roll two more dice. An eight and a one, so that's gonna be another one hit, single hit. To the giant mouth, if attacking with a melee weapon and the wound roll for this location is one or two. Uh, <laughs> the way this is going now, it might be successful suicide. I think so. We probably should have brought our dragon slayer, but I was too lazy. All right, giant mouth. Um, let's just not roll a one or two, and maybe we'll be fine. Here we go. A four plus three, seven plus six. That is not, that is not enough. So uh, nothing else happens there. And should we just run away? Oh my goodness, all right. <laughs> we, should, <laughs> we can't defeat this, defeat this with just one survivor, so. Oh my goodness, all right. Clara's gonna run one, two, three, four, five. Woyo's gonna run one, two, three, four, five. And should have brought Perfect Slayer, but the game giveth and taketh away, that's true. Oh, this is not good. I think Trump is gonna run for his life, so he's gonna spend should he surge or dash? Maybe. Yeah, I think he's gonna dash. Oh, he needs to stand his ground though. All right, let's just take it. At the start of the Screaming Antelope's turn, it's gonna target and attack any survivor in the blind spot. One speed, three plus accuracy, one damage. That's actually gonna turn into a two speed attack, hitting Trump on three or higher. Let's see. That's a one and a four, so one miss, one hit, one damage. Is that only one damage, really? No, no way. Plus two speed, plus two damage. Oh, whoops. I've been playing with the wrong amount of speed this entire game. So he should have had another plus two speed on his attacks, which is okay because he hasn't actually successfully dealt any uh, attacks thus far. And he has plus two damage, how foolish of me. This is gonna be a successful suicide for sure. All right, <laughs> so this is gonna be Three damage. That's gonna be. So I rolled two dice, right? So I need to roll two more dice. A three and a two, so that's another miss, but another hit. And that's gonna be three damage to the body and arm. Okay. So Buck takes a shot at Trump. So body's gonna go down to six, arms are gonna go down to zero. And now he has no armor on his arms. Oh dear. And then the Screaming Antelope's gonna draw a normal AI card. There's no end to this punishment. Run down, full move in the direction the monster is facing and turn to face the closest survivor. So he's gonna move one and then he's gonna turn to look at Trump. And then um, there are no knockdown survivors. There's no there is a closest survivor, which is Trump, who's just one space in front of the Screaming Antelope and then move twice and attack target. If this, if the target is knocked down, this attack gains plus three speed. Hmm, so, so he's just gonna walk up to Trump and move twice and attack target. So, oh no, I think he's just gonna move once. Okay, so full move in the direction, blah, 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 blah. All right, yeah. So just gonna be a just gonna be a four speed attack, hitting on twos and higher. Oh my goodness, hitting on twos and higher. So we rolled like eight five, eight five four and a four. That's gonna be four hits, four, four three damage to Trump on his head, head, body, waist. 
feels like we're playing like Dance Dance Revolution or something. So that's going to be three damage. So he's going to take a severe injury to the head. That's going to be one. He's going to take a... He's going to go down to six points on his waist. And he's going to go down to three points on his body. And Trump is going to roll for his poor head. But he's tough, so he gets a plus one on his um on his severe hits for his head. If that's any if that's any uh consolation. So let's see what he gets. This is why we chose a level three, it's just for the thrill of this. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Here we go, we got a three plus one is four. Decapitation. <laughs> All right, Trump is gone, and with him, our only chance of victory. There we go. Oh, I can feel my inner masochist coming out. All right, so now it is Woyo and Clara. They were never meant to take on the Screaming Antelope alone. And this is uh, this is how, how it's going to end. This is probably how the whole campaign is going to end. So the Screaming Antelope comes in hot. Oh, wait. Uh, with no... No target for Diabolical. The Screaming Antelope is simply going to full move forward, right? All right, so here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now he's right next to Woyo and Clara, who will proceed to beat him to death with their shields. Let's see if we can... <laughs> There's like zero chance of winning, but um, we're going to play. So Woyo's going to move in. One, two. So now, now we get to see the effects of this defeat. Potentially. Potentially. We haven't lost yet. I mean, we definitely got a bunch of iron, so I'm, I'm proud of that. But uh, Woyo's going to move in next with his round leather shield, and he's hitting on eights. Right? No. Yeah, eights. Here we go. An eight and a five. Wow, a hit by Woyo. To the wailing slide. Oh, the trap card. The trap card has reared its ugly head. The screaming antelope panics, its undermouth unleashing an inhuman wail. It bucks wildly and leaps into the air. The attacker is doomed. Also... Survivors adjacent to the monsters suffer two brain damage per monster level, knock back five, and are knocked down. Uh, let's see. So, survivors adjacent to the monsters suffer two brain damage, so six brain damage. So, William's going to go down to two. And, um, it's knock back five. One, two, three, four, five. Knock down. The monster lands on its belly and begins to slide on its teeth. Turn the monster directly away from the attacker and full move forward in a straight line. On collision, non-death survivors gain one random disorder in addition. All right, so the Screaming Antelope's now going to move over here. And it's kind of the, the chillest trap in the whole game, actually. But the Screaming Antelope doesn't even, doesn't even try to, to eat us or anything. This is my trap card. My inner child smiled so hard. <laughs> as it should. As it should. Man, I don't even want to play Tainted Grail tomorrow. I think we're gonna, we're definitely gonna put in all the cheap rules, and we're just gonna skip every single encounter in that game, and just, we're just gonna go full story mode. Chapter seven just killed all my enjoyment so far. All right, so hit location deck has been shuffled, and we have two survivors left. Actually, Wolio should have received a back kick as well. I totally forgot about that. So let's roll a four speed back kick before he goes flying from the trap. So that's going to be miss three hits to Woyo. And let's just expedite what's going to happen here. Waste, waste, leg. So that's going to be a severe injury to the waist. Let's see what he gets. Oh, it was almost a one. It is nine instead. Got to get this book. I like the little battles in Tiny Grail. It got super good last stream. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I guess. I guess. I'm just kidding. Oh, I mean, I think we'll do, like, if it's, like, a big fight, we'll do an encounter system. But a lot of, like, the tiny ones just really slows it down. All right, Woyo. You he rolled a nine on the waist. Bruised tailbone, the base of your spine. Wait a second. <clears throat> this life, it kills me. Bruised tailbone. The base of your spine is in agony. You cannot dash until showdown ends. You are knocked down, gain one bleeding token. All right. So he gains one bleeding token, and he lands on his butt. That's the first time someone's just gone knocked onto their butt uh, so far. And now, 
It is, we already attack, we activate the trap card, it's Clara's turn. And Clara is going to go ahead and attempt to use, <laughs> I'm being oppressed. Okay, as long as this one that matters happens. Bruised Tailbone is debilitating. All right, true. It's just, it's just the local ambiance leisurely. Don't worry about it. All right, Whisker Harp. Clara's gonna play a song and gonna strum. I've never, I've never played the Whisker Harp. So as long as we get a roll of six or higher, we discard one mood. We roll the one. It doesn't happen. So Clara's, <laughs> oh, what is Clara gonna do? Clara's gonna move one, two, three, four into uh, the bug patch. She's gonna surge going down to four survival. And she is going to go ahead. Actually, Wolyo doesn't get bashed, actually. Ominous sound. Yeah, I know. And then she's going to search this bug patch to get whatever supplies we can get. So here we go. We're just hoarding supplies now. Three. Insects scatter, leaving their meal behind. Gain one random basic resource and archive this terrain. All right, we can do that. Get rid of that. And our random basic resource of the day is... A monster hide wonderful so with that done uh, I think we're fine with dying and just playing dead and the <laughs> screaming antelope has won tremendously we should have brought our full 18 bite random survivor or closest survivor in field of view so that's gonna be L'Oreal that's gonna be a four speed attack and let's just accelerate that four dice hitting on twos and higher that's gonna be a four speed attack all of them hit Four dice coming at L'Oreal to her body, 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 and body. Oh my goodness. So her body is wrecked. Wrecked. So how many, how many, how many hits? Four damage per hit. So that's going to be two severe injuries. Oh dear. One severe injury to the, was it body? Yeah. To the body. It's going to be a seven to the body. And then the legs are going to go down to two, two, and one, two, three, one, two, three, two severe injuries. So she rolled a seven for one severe injury, and then a five on the other one. Let's see what happens to good old Clara. Clara on her body, ruptured spleen, a vicious body blow, skip the next hunt, gain two bleeding tokens. Oh, she'll be skipping the next hunt, all right. She'll definitely be skipping the next hunt. And then a five destroyed back, a sharp cracking sound, suffer minus two permanent movement. You can no longer activate any gear that has two plus strength. Oh, she won't. She won't. I'm not even going to write this down because she is, <laughs> she's definitely going to die. All right. The, oh, does she gain any more bleeding tokens? She probably, I probably should check that. Uh, gain one bleeding token. So that's going to be another bleeding token. And she's just too shy of complete devastation. So that being done, um, now the Screaming Antelope is going to diabolical her. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. She falls over in agony. And we are going to give her three damage to the head, which she actually has enough armor for. So she's going to go down to two armor on the head, and we're just slowly kind of acting out everything that's going to happen because the end is near, my fellows. My fellow gamers, the end is very near. So now, hmm, well, she's going to stand up because she's a fighter. And she's going to spend her last moments focusing on the good of the settlement and start going through the acanthus plants, which is fair, fair, fair enough. She rolled an eight, gain one fresh acanthus strange resource, which can be used for healing and other, other shenanigans. So that's going to be one fresh acanthus for Clara. Archive this to fully heal one hit location, including uh, injury levels and armor points. She could use that on her body, actually. Hmm. Is it worth it? No. Let's just save it for the save it for the settlement. And then Wo-Yo is going to... She's really cutting it close. That antelope is going down. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is it. This is it, boys. Wo-Yo is also going to play the defeatist round. He's just going to start harvesting acanthus for all it's worth. A five... On Acanthus, you find something tasty and consume it. If you do, gain plus one survival and archive this terrain. All right. So we're going to archive that terrains. And 
Screaming Antelope goes again. Just put us out of our misery, please. Thoughts and prayers. <laughs> All right, Slam. Closest survivor, closest knockdown survivor, furthest threat in field of view, graze, move, and attack. A nice, simple, basic attack. And this is going to be the furthest threat. So that's actually going to be Clara again. So Screaming Antelope's going to surge back to Clara. Rolling. Oh my goodness. Four speed. Is it, oh, he gets his plus one back because we didn't daze him. That's going to be a five speed attack. Crazy. And it's going to hit on every single one of them. For three damage to each hit location. Body, 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 waste. Body. Alright, so that's going to be four severe injuries to Clara's uh, body. So here we go. Let's uh, wish us luck. In what order does it happen? A seven, an eight, a nine, and a six. Seven, eight, nine, six. Well, she's dead. Let me just spoil that right there. Seven, eight, nine, six. That's the combination code. Seven, ruptured spleen. So that's the blow that actually kills her immediately. But before, it's over. On an eight, broken rib. It hurts even to breathe. Suffer minus one permanent strength. Seven, so ruptured spleen, a broken rib, a nine, a collapsed lung, and then totally disemboweled. So Clara is just completely trampled to itty bits. So too long, didn't read, wasted body. Clara is now also consumed and is now up to Woyo with his shield to face down the Screaming Antelope man to man before the Screaming Antelope runs and charges him with Diabolical. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, causing him to get knocked back and knocked down. Actually, he's wearing leather, so he doesn't suffer bash, but he's gonna take three damage to his arms, taking him down to twos. Was it just like 20 minutes ago, Bra was telling me that uh, that our clubs are gonna go through the screaming antelope like butter? Was that was that what he was that what he told me? Anyway, uh, Woyo takes some damage. He's still okay though, and now it's his turn. So Woyo's gonna put up a good fight. So here we go. It's been a while since we've made an attack roll. He's frenzying with two speed attacks, hitting on nines, I think, an eight and a one. Is it really? Ah, uh, he missed. And he can't surge. So the Screaming Antelope will go next with a Crush and Devour. Oh, wow. This is what I actually wanted. So if any attack roll hits, target gains the Gobbled Up Survivor status card. Wow. This is the moment. So this is going to be a 5, 6 speed attack. Hitting on everything. And we'll roll one more. So it hits on all 6 attacks. And before damage, the target gains the survivor's status gobbled up card. <laughs> Rob, he lied. <gasps> okay, so we're finally, this is the moment I've been waiting for, gobbled up. When you gain this, remove your survivor from the board and attack, place them on this card, then crush and devour. At the start of your act, crush and devour, masticated. If the monster suffers two wounds in a single round, crush and devour, regurgitate. So now, Wilio <laughs> is going to be crushed and gobbled, gobbled up. And it is now our turn. The Screaming Antelope is now going to um, start eating a canvas plant as, you know, what makes him happy. Now that the threats are off the board and he's going to start healing up some of his damage. And it's time to go to our favorite, actually our unviewed page of this book, and check out what happens when we get gobbled up. Crush and Devour, page 119. I hate saying that. I'm another Rob. I'm absolutely curious if there are long-term effects of being eaten. Let's find out. Let's find out. Page 100 and 19. Crush and devour. Wow, this is going to be a fun one. So there you go. Uh, that's what's happening to us, or not us, Woyo. Woyo is being consumed right now. We're being crushed and devoured. And let's see what happens to him. The survivor disappears, shrieking into the antelope, screaming antelope's giant undermaw. Wonderful. Uh, so at the, at the beginning of our turn, let's go ahead and roll a d10. We rolled a two. Swallowed whole, you are dead. The monster happily digests you, heals one wound, and gains plus one speed token. Wow, that was um not totally unexpected. <laughs> so you have been masticated, and Woyo meets a gruesome death and in the maw of the screaming antelope. Alright, there you go. That's that's what I get for <laughs> trying to raise the difficulty level. We dealt the screaming antelope. By the end, two wounds, 
and um, just a grim reminder that I should not have uh, killed all of our best players at the beginning of this settlement. So there we go. Oh man, we have to breed another generation of better survivors. So thanks for thanks for sticking around and watching with me. And let's see, leisurely minis chewed up. How close to death was it? Uh, we dealt two wounds to it out of let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So we dealt 2 divided by 21. That's like a little less than 10%. So we dealt 9% damage. Uh, we can has Alucard. Not even close. Yeah, so we dealt 9% damage to the Screaming Antelope uh, before he wrecked us. Uh, we have defeated a Screaming... I have just defeated a Screaming Antelope at some point. In, in the past, but that was a much stronger settlement. But that was fun to actually just get gobbled up. No regrets. Next year is level 2 Butcher. We're going to get absolutely, <laughs> absolutely wrecked. And uh, I shouldn't have done that. So maybe maybe next video we could turn back the clock. And I don't know. We're just going to see how far our settlement can even get to. Anyway, thanks for watching everyone. And uh, stomaching my, uh, my suicidal campaign. And I wish you all the very best, and I hope your your locales are a lot quieter than mine. So, oh wait, 22 cards, my bad. So like 7%. Level 2 Butcher is bad juju, keep going, all right. Um, nothing else to really say. We finished up kind of early today. Um, what do you think? Any any questions? Hope your headache goes away, man. Thanks, thanks, Leisurely, I appreciate that. It's, uh, I, I definitely forgot about it as, um, as, um, as Clara got disemboweled, so. Uh, I guess I guess Kingdom Kingdom Death Monster is actually good for my headache in a weird weird roundabout way. All right, we'll prob we'll, prob we'll probably play some Tainted Grail tomorrow, and uh, it's gonna be great or terrible, it's a, a combination of the two, and hopefully we'll finish Chapter Eight and things like that. So, see you tomorrow. Uh, take care, everyone. Have a good night, and we'll see you next time. So thanks for watching. Thanks for waiting, and now it's your turn. Take care, everyone.